depression and you're in this struggle and you're crying out to God that the Holy Spirit will continue to work in you and overcome in you and be the victory in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise his holy name. It's Jesus Christ living in me, living in you, overcoming in us. Sinners saved by grace. People with weaknesses. People with besetting sins. People with struggles. People with brokenness. People who got a story. People who've been broken by this and defeated by that. And ups and downs. And leaning upon Him. Jesus Christ living inside us. Working inside us. Giving us the victory. Revealing Himself. Hallelujah. Praise His holy name. Praise His holy name. He is real. He lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what it is. It's Him. It's, it's, he's real. Folks, He's more real to me than this life right here I'm living. All this is temporal to me. Everything, I, 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 when, God, when, you, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you, be, you are put in a position in heavenly places. You understand the mind of God. You, you, you see yourself sometimes as a sinner. You fail. You got struggles. You got weaknesses. You, 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 all these things that you're dealing with in your DNA from your family tree. But God says, I see you through the blood. I see you through the blood. Don't look at yourself. I see you through the blood. Now you have a theophany body, folks. You've, everybody's heard from their body. Either, either you're going straight to hell and it's pulling you down or you're going straight up. And you've heard from your theophany body. And it's waiting for you. It's a glorified body. Amen? And God sees you through the veil. You see yourself on this side of the veil as a sinner. As somebody who's got weaknesses. And somebody who's got struggles and besetting sins. And your ups and your downs. And your ins and your outs. But God says, I want you to start seeing yourself as I see you. I want you. God help us to see ourselves as He sees us through the blood. Through the blood veil, he sees us as sinless. We're perfect. We're righteous. Oh, hallelujah. Praise be to God. There's nothing stands before us as we begin to understand and see ourselves as he sees us. Then we begin to realize Satan is a liar. He's defeated. He's a bluff. He's, he's trying to work in our emotions and our, our struggles and through other people, and Pharisee spirits, and all these things coming against you. And God says, see yourself, my child. See yourself through the blood. See yourself as I see you. Amen. Rise up. Amen. Amen. You've heard. You've heard. Your theophany body, your glorified body is calling you. Amen. Oh, <laughs> folks, there's going to be a rapture. And you're going to, in a moment of twinkling of an eye, whoo, sweep over. Body change, theophany body, glorified body. And then when we come back to the earth someday again, then we'll, we'll, we'll eat food, we'll, be, we'll build houses. We'll be just, it'll be because, you know what? The meek shall inherit the earth. That's us. Amen? Praise God. Don't be a part of a clique, a Pharisee spirit. Don't, 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 don't you dare. You're part of the body of Jesus Christ. You are a part of the body of Jesus Christ. You are redeemed of the Lord. You are, you are much beloved. You are precious in His sight because you're, He died for you. You are His daughter. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care where, what sins you've committed. He loves you. You're forgiven. Go and sin no more. You are forgiven. Come to your position. Understand who you are because the devil's been lying to you. He's been lying to you. He told you you ain't good enough. Look what you've done. He keeps you defeated. He keeps you seeing yourself by pointing you backwards. And God says, you know what? I'm the I am. I am that I am. I'm the present tense God. God, what did the Apostle Paul tell us in the scripture? What's it say? One thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. I press, I press, I press toward the mark. Press, folks. Press toward that mark in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs>
Oh, the Lord is good. I just the whole the Holy Spirit's here, taking over, preaching through me. Hallelujah! God is good. God is great. Amen. It's Him. It's Him. Oh, I'm beside myself right now. I got to pinch myself. I'm I'm still here. <laughs> One of these days, one of these days, I was telling that lady this morning, I said, you know, one of these days, they're going to, those people that, you know, all those spirits that run their mouths and trying to persecute and attack, when that rapture takes place, where are having that preacher? I haven't heard of YouTube. I haven't seen a guy posting on the Facebook page in a while. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. I'm going to be out of here, folks. Glory to God. So are you. Amen. Those people who talk about you. The, the, the little clicks and the persecution that's come against you and the devil trying to tell you ain't you ain't worthy. Oh, folks, you are worthy. You are a part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And God is one of these days. He's going to do this. All your enemies are going to be silenced. Quietly silenced. And then the judgment falls. Amen. But we're going to be... <laughs> Woo! We're going to be gloriously changed in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. Whew. Glory. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Why would you not want to serve him? Seriously. Hallelujah. I'm drunk. Let me tell you something right now. I feel drunk. I don't need a drink. I got water. I, I got the Holy Spirit right now. Amen. I'm drunk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I'm beside myself. I don't need an alcoholic drink. I got him. He wants to give you this. I don't have silver and gold, but what I have I give to you. Receive His Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. It'll change your life. Oh, amen. It's the greatest, glorious most thing that's ever, ever changed my life, ever happened to me. Amen? Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise His holy name. <laughs> amen. This is what it is, folks. And the enemy hates it. He's jealous of it. They don't understand it, folks. Until they, till it's like, you know, one time I heard a preacher tell a story of somebody making it, I don't know, I'll do my best here, but basically making it in front of somebody else who's got the Holy Spirit, not understanding. And the guy was eating an apple, and he said, let me tell you what, if you, until you eat this apple, this apple I'm eating, you, you don't know, you know? You don't understand until you partook of this, folks. If you've not partook of it, come. Come. This is the only way. It's Him. It's Jesus Christ. It's Him. It's His Word. It's His life living in us. We are His church. We are His redeemed. And He loves us. You are special to Him. You know how much you love your kids? Somebody tried to do something to them. You know how upset you'd be? You know how much angry it gets you? And when people run their mouths and talk against you and attack you, Oh, boy. Papa God. <laughs> oh, Papa God. Oh, Abba Father. Boy, he gets upset, folks. His righteous indignation kicks in, and then his judgments begin to come. Amen? And it may not fall till way down the road for those people, but boy, he loves us. He protects us. Because you know what? You are his daughter. You are his son. You are precious to him. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I love it when it's, he takes over. I'm off script here, as they say. Um, and with that being said, as I want to keep this three-parter, um, let, uh, let me drop, skip a little bit here. Read Matthew chapter 23. And it's a whole chapter. I was going to read the whole chapter, but read it, folks. Read it. It's beautiful. I love it. It just, uh, and, uh, oh, man. Yeah. Mm. Praise this Lord, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep this three parter. And uh, Matthew chapter three, and we're talking about the Pharisees, right? Uh, and if I have time, I don't think I'm gonna have time. If I do, I'll go back and read chapter twenty three. But I'm gonna continue here so I can get these few scriptures out, and we'll be done. But uh, Matthew chapter three, verse seven. Um, this is John the Baptist. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, "O generation of vipers, pretty rough, ain't it?" The anointing of God preaches rough, folks. <laughs> it calls out the old, the, it calls out the enemy. Who hath, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. Oh, we're religious. We're Catholic. 
We're, we're Church of God. We're Presbyterian. We're all these... We're Pentecostal, folks. You're not a... Quit identifying with the system. I preach against it all the time, what the mark of the beast is, folks. Identify with Christ, the Word. Identify with Christ, the Word. That's it. God's calling His people away from all that stuff, folks. It's a relationship. It's you and Him. It's a love affair, folks. It's a love affair. Don't sit, like he says here, Pharisees, oh, we got Abraham to our fathers. Father Abraham, trying to identify with something of the past. Every one of your denominations is something from the past. You understand that? They had, they had, a, they had a founding date, and they become Baptists. They become Methodists. Then they become Pentecostal. Then they become the title, non, the big movement, the big, the big, the most deceptive movement in the last series of years. In the, fair, in, the, in, the, in the latest in church age I preach about in Revelations 3 is this non-denominational. We're not a denomination. It's how deceiving how Satan has worked. You are still a system. You still have a founding date. You still have a doctrine that you've created within yourself. God's not, the Holy Spirit just keeps moving past every bit of that. He's looking for individuals. Individuals that will come unto him and hear his voice, which is his word. And being filled with the Holy Ghost in that relationship, that's the body of Christ. Amen? Now, don't take me wrong. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling. Two or three gathered in my name. What is his name? They're gathering under the true, pure, precious, just the word of God. No, no, Ill, no other alternative motives. The first church, the book of Acts, they had that. They come together just for one purpose, the word of God and the ministry of the gospel. They gather together and the spirit of God would fall upon them and they'd be preaching and signs and wonders and miracles taking place under the, under the true preaching of the word, folks. So I'm not against that, but it's got to be under his. It has to be two or three gathered in his name. His name is the word, folks. That's the crucial key here. Now, let me continue. Matthew 5, verse uh, 17. Think not, I'm, think, he says, hey, let's think not I've come to destroy the law of the prophets, Jesus says. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, folks, I'm not, I'm not preaching to destroy uh, this whole thing about going to church. And I think some people misunderstand that. I'm trying to preach a message that's fulfilling what's getting ready to take place at the very end. That God is calling his people the mark of the beast that's coming. I'm telling you, folks, it's coming. And it's coming right through religious, right through the church. And it's all the, the Bible says she's the, the image unto the beast is your, is your Christian churches. And the mother of her is the Catholic, the Rome, Pope. And I preach this many times, folks. It's God's word. And I'm here as a voice, not trying to, I'm not trying, as Jesus said, to destroy it but to fulfill and get God's people to, to where the, what the message is right now for today, 2020. Not living off manna from the past of what, what, what your church was, your system was founded upon. The Holy Spirit keeps moving every day, folks. Stay with the Word. Stay with the Word. Stay with God. Stay, it's an individual race. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the only times I got a message is coming. I'm just waiting for the right moment to give the Lord to give me a message. It's been in my mind for a long while, but we're just going to wait on God on this one. Okay. He said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one title shall no ways pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Whoso therefore shall break one of, the, one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoso shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. He says, if your righteousness doesn't exceed the, the, the righteousness of the, of the Pharisees and Sadducees, who were religious, who went to church, who were dedicated to their system, their church, who were part of their group, who, had, who, who kept the law of Moses and did all these things, folks, but miss the righteousness of, of the cross. If it doesn't exceed it, folks, which it is found through Christ, that the Bible says, for he became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. 
So it's, it's through the cross of Jesus Christ and accepting him that, that that's where your righteousness then exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and Sadducees. But it's more than that. Because many that's the, the, the Christian church says, well, fuck Paul, I, I've accepted Christ as my Savior. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Have you, are you accepting God's message and complete word for right now? As God is calling out and put ministries here to call people to what God is warning us right now. Are you following the word for today? That's the difference, folks. Because when Jesus came along, he had a message that was rejected. The Pharisees didn't want to hear it. What's this guy talking about? It was the message for that hour that was being sent in fulfillment of scriptures for that time frame. But it was being rejected by the church. The same as it's happening right now today in this moment of time. The church has rejected the true message of God, the true word of God. They don't recognize it. We got, we got Abraham into our fathers. We got our church. We got, we, 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 we got the Bible. We talk about Paul. We, we preach the word. You're not catching what God's sending right now, what God is trying to warn and do in this, in this precious moment of time to get his final people out ready to go before the mark of the beast comes in full, full, full force and, and the tribulation period sets, on, sets in, folks. Recognize your day and its hour. Recognize your time. And tell Satan to get behind you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen? He tries to come against your mind and get you confused and get you under fear and get you doubting and questioning things. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Follow the true word, the message for God is given right now. In this day, where we're at, what God is warning and trying to get us to as his people. Amen? Amen. So... I'm going to drop, you know, i got about seven more minutes, eight minutes for it to be past a three-parter. Let's see where I'm at here. I'm going to read a few more scriptures. Um, let me drop down to Luke. Let's go to Luke Luke 7, okay, verse 31. And the Lord said, Whereunto shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you. And you have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. For John the Baptist came either eating, eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a devil. The Son of Man is coming, which is talking about himself, Jesus, eating and drinking. And you say, Behold, a gluttonous man, and a wine bibber, a friend of the publicans, and, a, and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. So the Pharisee spirit, folks, it always looks for something, some reason to attack, all, some reason to, flip, to, to look into your life and try to find somewhere where, you're, where oh, you, you mess up here. Oh, look at you there. That's a, the that's a Pharisee spirit. It's self-righteous. It tries to pick apart and belittle and, 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 and slander and attack you no matter what you're doing. That's a Pharisee spirit. Because Jesus said, John over here didn't eat or drink. And you said he's got a devil. Well, I'm over here eating and drinking. You say, I got, I, I'm a gluttonous and a wine bibber. So no, no matter what we do, the Pharisee spirit, no matter what you do, still tries to find something to attack you, folks, folks. That's just how it works. You can't, it doesn't matter what you do because they got a spirit on them that is, that is straight from the pits of hell. And it's a religious spirit. Like I said, it goes to church and it, and it reads the Bible and, 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 and acts like it's, it, it's of God. And it doesn't matter what you do as a child of God, it's going to find something to try to attack you. Just like Jesus said, John here doesn't eat or drink. He's, oh, he's got a devil. But Jesus over eating and drinking, oh, he's a gluttonous. He's a wine bibber. He's a friend of sinners. I'm so glad Jesus is a friend of, sin friend of sinners. I'm so glad Jesus loves the outcast. Jesus saves homosexuals, folks. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. Amen. God loves and saves everybody who, who, who will come unto him and receive of his grace the prostitutes, the, 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 the adulterous women, the adulterous men, the alcoholics, the drunks, the, those who are hooked on drugs. The, those are the, the, God's a friend of sinners. Those are the people he was sent to. Those are the people that, that love him and follow him and accept him. Amen. Those are his children. Those are the ones that have a testimony in our use of God. Those that, in the eyes of the Pharisees, the eyes of men, oh, look at Tim, look at her. Oh, my God, that's, that's, that's the lady so-and-so. Look at what she, what, what she did or what he did. 
you self-righteous Pharisees. He that's without sin among you, let him first cast a stone, Jesus said. And not a stone will come at you, folks, because they can't cast a stone. Pharisee spirit. And of the Pharisees desired, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. If this breaks past into a four-parter a few minutes, I want to finish this, guys. I do this once a week. I'm rushing my mind, and I, don't, I want to relax. I want to get this story out here, and then we're going to finish up. He went to the Pharisee's house. The Pharisee wanted him to come. So I love this story. And sat down to meet, to eat. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus was sat at meat. Let me tell you something. I remember years ago when I was living in New Carlisle. I was a youth pastor of a church in Huber Heights. I remember a, a, a woman and a man. In the church that I was a part of, you know, there was, there was, there was some Pharisees. I said that Pharisee spirit's everywhere, folks. That self-righteous spirit, I've dealt with it everywhere I've gone through my life. And she was going through a struggle. They were having marital problems. And she was making some decisions that 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 were, you know, some sexual sin decisions that weren't that weren't proper, right? And I got to spend time with those two, the husband and wife, trying to help them, counsel them. Uh, I was the ex the youth pastor, and I remember um, trying to reaching out to her and, and and listening to her story. And when I finally got to spend time around him and her. They came over my house, and I was at the time I was married, and uh, I had a book sitting there. It's called Churches That Heal, and the story that, the, uh, of the woman caught in adultery. Of, of adultery, she picks the book up, she's reading that, and she's like, her heart. It's like she begins to. Uh, it's been a long time. I don't know if she was started crying, but her heart was just like, I just want. This is what I want to. This is, you know, she was basically was like, you could see that. The church was, was condemning her. The way they were handling her was not right. And here I was trying to show her what, what Jesus' love was about. She was starving. Really what she was starving for all along was to understand who Jesus, to see Jesus as a God who loves and a God who forgives. And she had heard so much legalism and so much that Pharisee spirit throughout her journey that many times that will lead people the total 360 direction from, from, from what God is. And she was making a bad choice, and she made that choice, and she was struggling. And all she was wanting to, to, to feel, and she was looking for it, and the church wasn't giving it to her, was that, does Jesus love me? Does Jesus forgive me? And I'm over here trying to minister and help them. You know, there's a lot of people that are broken, a lot of people who make decisions in their life and, and, and make mistakes and do things that, that you can't, that we all have a story, folks. But Jesus forgives Jesus looked at that woman caught in adultery and said, I don't condemn thee, go and sin no more. Amen. So let me, let me get back to the story. It just I come to my mind that it's been a long time ago. I was probably 25 years old. And uh, to me, I, God gave me a heart to help them, to, to show her what Jesus was about, to just talk, talk to her about Jesus' love and Jesus' grace, because that's what she needed to hear. That's what they were going through, and they were they were struggling to to get through their marital issues and, and grow through that time, and that's what she was needing. Hear that cricket? Yeah, he's hey, you, it's enough. <laughs> so, um, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. I love the story. And when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alab alabaster box. Oh man, there's a, there's a song. Listen, find the search this song later on. You get on, listen to my message. Get it when this is done. Look up the song Alabaster Box, folks. I have wept many times hearing that song. I think it's a there's a black lady that sings it. I can't remember her name. Um, beautiful song. She gets her alab alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet, behind him weeping. She was a sinner. She knew she had sin in her life. She did, she, the Pharisee spirit would, 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 would judge and pick her apart. She knew she was a sinner. She began to weep. She was weeping and began, she began to wash his feet with her tears. Her tears are going down her eyes. 
She's crying. She knows that she's got sin in her life. She knows that she's, she's failed God through her journey. She's carrying that sin. But she knows that this, this Jesus, there's something different about him. He's not like the Pharisees or the churches that I was a part of who condemn me and judge me and, and slander me and picked on me. This Jesus, he, he talks about love. He talks about grace and forgiveness and mercy. I want to I want I want I want to go I want to wash his feet. Amen. She washes his feet with his with her tears. And she wipes the te- his feet with the hairs of her head. She she's the tears are coming down on Jesus' feet. <laughs> And her hair, and she's wa- and she's washing the feet of Jesus. Those tears were tears of brokenness from her life, for her own sins, and she in her own struggles. And she's washing Jesus' feet, and she kisses his feet, and anoints them with ointment. Now, when the Pharisees, here we go, that Pharisee spirit, that self-righteous, cruel miserable spirit which had bidden him saw it and spake within himself saying this man if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him for she is a sinner a Pharisee spirit oh if if he was a prophet he only knew what was what was touching him the sinner woman oh God have mercy and Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, Simon the Pharisee, I have someone, I have somewhat to say unto you. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Hmm. See where this is going, folks? Simon answered and said, I suppose he that, to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I have entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water. Jesus walked. He said, Listen, I'm over here in your house. You didn't even give me water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with her tears. The the tears of brokenness. The tears of her sins. The tears of her regret. The tears of her pain. Amen. The tears of her guilt. They're pouring down off off her face and falling on his feet. She's washing his feet with her tears. And he says, you haven't even so much as took water and washed my feet. He says here, and wiped him with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. (laughs) Folks, your feet is the dirtiest part of your body. She didn't care. She didn't care. She just was at the feet of Jesus. She understood he holds mercy. He holds the key to forgiveness and grace. That's the Jesus that I love. That's the Jesus that that loves you, folks. He holds that key. Come to him like her and just weep at his feet. And you'll find forgiveness like you've never felt. In a love like you've never experienced. Amen. He says here, this my head with oil. He said, Thou didn't anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, woo, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. 
And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Oh, thy faith hath saved thee. Thy faith. Go in peace. Amen. Oh, praise God. Praise Him. Worship Him, guys. Praise Him. Our sins that may be many, we come to His feet. We bring Him to His, His presence. Daughter of God, child of God, come to Him. You are always His child. You just got away from Him. And He's calling. He's saying, come home. Come back. Come to me. Come to me. Folks, I, we've all had times where we get away from God. We go through a journey. And the devil can slip in so easy sometimes. And we get in our emotions. And we get caught in things. And he can take us down a road. But come back. Come to him. He's waiting for you with arms open. He's on the mercy seat still. Amen. This will be a four-parter. I apologize. So because of that, I got a few, just, just I always like to read just quick verses and then I'm done here. So this isn't stories, just Proverbs 16, 2. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. We talk about the Pharisee spirit. Oh, they think they got they, they, their little cliques and their little, their little self-righteous religious spirit. Oh, we're right. We got this figured out. We're da, 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 da. Child of God recognizes he's got, we got sin. I have to constantly. I have to go to God every day and ask God to forgive me my sins. I have no. I have no. There's nothing inside me. I have no problem with apologizing, asking for forgiveness. If I offend somebody else and and I brought to my attention, I mess up. I'm human. Just say forgive me. Amen. That's what a child of God does. That's what the Holy Spirit does in your life. But the the Pharisee spirit, all oh, their ways are clean. All oh, we, we don't. <laughs> I'm clean in my own eyes. I ain't got nothing to repent of. I ain't done nothing wrong. Pharisee. But the Lord weigheth the spirits, and you're found. You're way to the balance, and you're found wanting. Amen. Proverbs thirty verse twelve. There's a generation that is pure in their own eyes. Oh boy, if that isn't the generation we live with, we deal with today. This this sort of self uh, self entitlement, self righteous. Uh, millennial type of mentality, as they call it, or whatever. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't matter an age group. It's on every every age group. You see, it's a spirit, folks. It's a self entitled. Oh, I you owe me. You I I deserve this. Blah 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 blah. A mental weak mentality, folks. That comes from this Pharisee type of spirit. That's pure in their own eyes. They, I got nothing wrong with me. Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. I don't. Yeah. Sad. Just like the Pharisees, self-righteous. Yet he is yet is not washed from their filthiness. Yet you're not washed. You think you're okay. I want to be like that woman who washed his feet. Don't you? That's the heart that God may God always give me that type of heart and give you that type of heart to come repented to Him. Amen. Hebrews thirteen twelve. Take heed, there, brethren. Take heed, brethren. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. 